Breaking news, this just into the Maximus Aviation Pretend Newsroom. According to sources, well, mainly myself, NASA never actually intended to return the Starliner astronauts on the crippled spacecraft, even though insisting otherwise. I'll explain in a minute. But the plan this whole time was actually for them to return on a SpaceX vehicle in August. However, that was until SpaceX's bulletproof reliable Falcon 9 rocket suffered a rare failure on July 11. Well, that was very Boeing of them. But now that leaves NASA, Boeing, and frankly the U.S. government with a huge problem because they may need a big favor from Russia. And considering the view of everything Russia these days, that's going to be a bad look for the U.S. But it's sure to put a grin on old Vlad's face. That's next on Maximus. You are watching Maximus Aviation. Greetings, everybody. Maximus here. And boy, do I have a lot of space news for you. So while NASA and Boeing have been publicly touting the safety of Starliner and have both stated that the Starliner would indeed return veteran astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, or as I affectionately call them, Butch and Sundance, safely back to Earth, that was all actually just a misdirect and was never going to be the plan regardless of what NASA or Boeing said publicly. And that's because neither company can afford another death on their watch. But the actual plan was to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, which was scheduled to arrive at the ISS in mid-August, on a mission called Crew 9 that was supposed to send four astronauts to the ISS to relieve Crew 8, which has been on the ISS since March for what was expected to be about a half-year mission. So Butch and Sundance were going to hitch a ride on the SpaceX Crew Dragon. So Maximus, you may ask, why isn't this still the plan? Well, that's because the SpaceX Crew Dragon uses the historically reliable Falcon 9 heavy rocket, which SpaceX has used without fail since 2016 when a geomagnetic storm knocked 40 satellites from the sky shortly after the satellites were put into orbit. That is, until July 11 of this year when SpaceX's most recent Starlink satellite launch went initially as expected and the rocket's first stage successfully detached from the second stage payload with 20 satellites scheduled to be deployed. While the first stage landed on a drone ship in the Pacific Ocean, however the second stage then failed to complete its second burn due to a liquid oxygen leak, leaving it stranded in a low orbit around the Earth. Although the rocket's second stage was able to release the Starlink satellites, the satellites became stuck in orbit 84 miles above the Earth, around half the height at which they need to normally orbit. So at that elevation, atmospheric drag slowed the satellites down and they fell back to Earth, of course burning up upon re-entry. So this recent failure has now put NASA's Starliner rescue plan on hold because SpaceX is now investigating what happened, which means SpaceX won't be able to launch any more Falcon 9 rockets until this investigation is complete. And in more bad news for Butch and Sundance, an unnamed industry expert told Space News that the Saturn 9 could be grounded for months, which if true would force a major reshuffle of the launch schedule for the rest of the year. So all of a sudden, NASA's Plan B just literally blew up. So what's Plan C? Well, Plan C would have been to send a second Starliner to the ISS, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist, yes, pun intended, to see that that's not an option. Yeah, Maximus, we get it, but what about the Russians? All right, hang on, I'm getting there. But while NASA has been downplaying Starliner's defects while swearing it will still bring Butch and Sundance home, here's the problem. And it's a life and death problem at that. Because like I said earlier, neither of these companies can afford any more loss of life. Especially when you consider the Boeing Starliner was originally scheduled to fly way back in 2017, yet here we are with the first crewed mission in 2024, and Bush and Sundance barely survived the ship's first voyage. And yes, well, that's so Boeing of them, but all these years of delays and defects combined with the latest problems raise questions over the whole Starliner program. So then what's the deal with the helium? Well, helium is pressurized and injected into the maneuvering thrusters to steer the ship in space. However, if it's leaking helium, then there would be enough fuel left in the Starliner's thrusters to steer the capsule for proper re-entry alignment. However, the leaks were detected pre-launch and NASA and Boeing still determined it to be okay for launch anyway. And yes, that is very NASA of them. And while four of the five thrusters have been repaired so far at the ISS, there is still a very real danger of the rest of its thrusters failing during the return journey to Earth. 
causing the Starliner and its crew to burn up on re-entry. However, NASA says that result is very unlikely. You know, unlikely as in Challenger, Columbia, and the Max, just to name a few. You know, that kind of unlikely. So yeah, I'm pretty sure Bush and Sonny would rather not take the chance in the Starliner and wait for the next train home. But meanwhile, back on Earth, NASA is currently conducting ground tests as well as back on the ISS to gather as much information as possible before a return of the ship can even be contemplated. Okay, now we can talk about Mother Russia. Since Plan B, SpaceX, is not an option, and Plan C, another Starliner launch, is frankly hysterical, well then that just leaves us with Plan D which coincidentally stands for Dosvidanya, which in Russian means goodbye. Adios. See you later. And that's exactly what Butch and Sundance want to do. However, and this is a big however, However. there are two Russian options that NASA could possibly use if they don't want to roll the dice on Starliner risking losing the crew on re-entry. But that's going to require not only Boeing and NASA to grab their ankles, but the U.S. government as well. Because Russia has a launch of its own Progress spacecraft to the ISS set for August 15th. Progress spacecraft are automated, unpiloted, and single-use vehicles that typically deliver fuel and supplies to the International Space Station three or four times each year. The Progress design was modeled after Russia's Soyuz space capsule, which carries crew members to the ISS, but is specifically modified to carry cargo instead of people. So it would take quite some diplomacy to get the Russians to reconfigure that spacecraft to carry astronauts again, but it is an option. And finally, the last option is the break glass in case of emergency option, and that is the Russian Soyuz capsule permanently docked at the ISS as an emergency escape capsule, something the Russians have done before. For example, back in 2023, Russia launched a mission to rescue three crew members from the International Space Station when a Soyuz capsule, which was meant to bring back two cosmonauts and an Astra astronaut, was damaged after being hit by a micrometeoroid in December of 2022. But that left the ISS astronaut stranded for a few months before it could be replaced. And NASA recently cited an example of why the U.S. needs more than just one crew vehicle in its fleet, because it was six years ago a rare Russian abort during an astronaut launch caused a delay in human spacecraft schedules. Back in 2018, when a Russian Soyuz spacecraft was bound for the ISS, a sensor aboard the Soyuz rocket aborted it back to Earth. The two astronauts on board were safe, but for several weeks it was unclear if the usual six-month rotation of the ISS crews would be disrupted. But fortunately, Russia once again came to the rescue with their bulletproof bucket of bolts Soyuz and resolved the issue quickly and sent the next crew to space about two months later. And then just last month, coincidentally, Butch and Sundance while at the ISS on June 27, astronauts had to briefly take shelter after a Russian satellite broke up in Earth's orbit. At the same time, NASA instructed crews aboard the space station to shelter in their respective spacecrafts, which is standard protocol. So the Russians went in their Soyuz and Butch and Sunny took shelter in the Starliner. Well, I guess that's a little positive news for you if you're looking for it. But after about an hour of sheltering in place, the crew was given the all clear to re-enter the ISS. But like I said, given international tensions between Russia and the West, it would take some serious diplomacy or some good hard cash, to get the Russians to play ball. However, by July 21st, Bush and Sundance will have spent 45 days on the ISS, which means they are literally running out of time, because Starliner is only designed to be docked to the ISS for 45 days, or up to 90 days maximum, but using vital ISS backup systems, and that depends largely on the health of its lithium-ion batteries. Either way, this whole mission has been foobar so far. So that means unless Elon Musk can get the Falcon 9 rocket problems figured out in the next month or so, NASA and Boeing need to terrifyingly roll the dice and send Sonny and Butch back home in a defective capsule or pucker up and kiss some serious Russian zhopa. I'll let you look up that word for homework. Oh, and also some other homework. You need to get down to the comment section and let me know down below. Either way, let's all pray for the safe return of Butch and Sonny. And as always, thanks for stopping by. And until next time, yeah, this is Maximus.